Our so-called public health officials, all progressives, are turning our young people into COVID paranoiacs. Dear Superintendent, Dr. Green, and school board members, I would like to encourage the requirement of masks at school in Duval County. I'm so worried that if masks are not required, my brother could go to school one day and the next be dying in the hospital. At school, I wear two masks because I want to make sure I don't get sick. Now, this is so sad. And I blame the parents, but mostly I blame the Democrats. They want everyone scared. They want you in hiding. They don't want you to talk to your neighbors. They don't want you to go to church. They want you to be waiting for the next order from the CDC. It's cruel. The road to hell, it's paved with, please keep your distance stickers. No, I would argue the road to hell is paved with the likes of people like Laura Ingram, Tucker Carlson, and all the other goons who have, it seems like a financial interest in lying to the American people about something that they need to protect themselves from. So the video that she showed featured a 12 year old girl in Florida asking that her school implement a mask mandate. So her 10 year old brother who cannot get vaccinated, doesn't get sick. And the concern is real because with this Delta variant, we're starting to see an uptick in the number of children who are being hospitalized with the coronavirus. Now, let's also take a step back and look at the bigger picture. It's still far less likely to impact children the way it's been impacting adults. However, we don't know what the future holds with these mutations. We already see that the virus has mutated into something that is that is far more easy to get infected by. It's far more contagious and is starting to have an impact on younger patients. And the fact that she's making this out to be like, oh, you're just instilling fear in children. Charles, what, is, what does Laura Ingram do on literally a nightly basis? You know, you started off the segment and took the words right out of my mouth in as much as Laura Ingram is content to hustle and peddle controversy for profit. She is more than fine fear mongering for viewership, for followers, for her audience in a way that is quite frankly harmful. Dangerous and disgusting. I've said on this program a number of times before, and I will say it again you cannot hustle controversy for profit because you are playing with forces that you can't control. Mm -hmm. And in this case, with Laura Ingram, what she's doing, and it's also very subtle, in my opinion, very, very nefarious. In the entire Laura Ingram clip, for as much as she has had to say about uh, mask mandates and fearing the Democrats and you know people socially distancing and Democrats want to keep you away from your neighbors. She also simultaneously acknowledges that this is a very, very transmittable disease, but yet has no solution for containing it and avoiding further spreading and lengthening of the pandemic. So you have all of these criticisms for the Democrats and all of these criticisms around social distancing, and all of these criticisms around mass mandates, and all these criticisms around different measures that are genuinely intended to help keep people safe. But you don't have a solution, right. you don't have an alternative. All you're doing is pointing at, at, at Democrats, at the left, as you know, these are the boogeymen, these are the people you need to be scared of, and saying, well, these are the people that are trying to make you scared. So it's like this really not subtle, not that clever trick that she's invoking and I just think that given what's at stake here, it's pretty disgusting and very, very unfortunate. Yeah. And the other thing that I wanted to say, Anna, is this comes up a lot. People like to talk about the relative mortality rate or survival rate from the virus. Mm -hmm. When did death become the bar? It's, like, it's amazing, is, yeah. No, like, it's why is like I survived or you're likely to survive but that's not the standard. That's not right. the barometer for, you know, a strong public health, right? Like we still do not know what the long-term effects of contracting this virus can be. We still do not have an appreciation for the level of impact 
the crippling level of impact that this virus has had on our infrastructure, our healthcare infrastructure in the country, and what may continue to be a problem going forward. And yet and still, one of the most prevalent arguments that I hear, that's not a good argument, is well, you have a likelihood of survive a high likelihood of surviving. Right. Why is that the standard? There's so much that we don't understand about this virus, right? And, and I say that because it, it, this situation is fluid, clearly. I mean, things have changed and we have to kind of adapt to the changes because this is a novel coronavirus. We're dealing with variants of it and we don't know. There's a lot we don't know, including what the long-term effects can be on, on people who do contract it. But you know, I want you to hold that thought because I think that the next clip um, makes your commentary even more relevant uh, because my personal opinion is the second part is what infuriated me. So let's just take a, let's take a quick look at it. But thankfully, parents nationwide have finally begun to fight back as they did in Tennessee yesterday. No more masks. I'll see you all in court. Yes. My child will not be missing. Dr. Fauci would be so disappointed in you people. Like, I don't know why Dr. Fauci needs to be the boogeyman. Like, the. Look, Dr. Fauci has had a few missteps of his own, including discouraging people from wearing masks in the early days of the pandemic because there was a mask shortage in the country and we needed healthcare workers to have access to them. He shouldn't have done that, he should have just been honest with the American people. But outside of that, the guy is trying to give people information to keep themselves and their loved ones safe. And Laura Ingram in that video decides to give props, a round of applause to the lunatics who decided to threaten school board members and also health experts who showed up to that school board meeting to give their medical advice in regard to a potential mask mandate in Tennessee, in one school district in Tennessee. In fact, let me remind you of the kind of threats that they threw at these health experts as they were trying to get away from the scene. That is what Laura Ingram is applauding. Let's take a look at that. Come. No more masks. We're on these guys' side. They're no, on our side. No, they're not. They're not no, on no, our no. side. The police are on our side. The police, the police are on our side. side. Calm, down. Yes. calm down. Yes. Calm down. We, we know who we you know are. Who you are. We, know we know who you are. You can leave freely, but we will find you and we know who you are. You will never be allowed in public again. You will never be allowed. You'll never let us be allowed in public again. I know who you are. Let him out. Let's let him out. We know who you are, we know where to find you. Those are threats that, again, Laura Ingram herself, you just heard it, decided to applaud on her show. And that crowd of people who are getting rowdy and violent toward health experts who are just trying to keep their children safe. Laura Ingram is partly to blame for that. She's the one who encourages it and they love it, they love it. It's part of their profit motive. They have an incentive to do it, it keeps their ratings up. One more video from Laura Ingram and this is the one that really did the trick for me. Let's watch. By the way, why wasn't Dr. Fauci and Francis Collins constantly lecturing kids about masks during the nasty 2019 flu season when a record 188 of them died? Yeah, you know what, why don't we look at the numbers? Since Laura Ingram, who has unlimited resources at this well watched cable news network, doesn't have the ability to look it up or have one of her minions look it up for her. So why don't we do it for her? You know, maybe we can educate Laura Ingram on what the reality is of the flu that she's talking about, the flu season that she's talking about, compared to what we're experiencing right now with this coronavirus, which could have easily been over by now if people wore their damn masks and took their damn vaccines. Okay, but hey, you know, we want to talk about freedom. The freedom of those who are doing the right thing and getting vaccinated, their freedom doesn't matter. It's all about the freedom of lunatics who absorb garbage content like what we just saw from Laura Ingram. Let's look at what happened in 2019 with flu season. 
During the 2019 to 2020 influenza season, CDC estimates uh, or estimates that influenza was associated with 38 million illnesses. That's a lot. 18 million medical visits, 405,000 hospitalizations. That's a lot of hospitalizations and 22,000 deaths. There were 22,000 deaths. Want to know how many Americans have died during the coronavirus pandemic? 617,000. Let's look at how many children died. 199 child deaths were reported for the 2019 to 2020 season as of May 27th, 2021. Okay, so that's tragic. Right, that is tragic. Why don't we take a look at how many children have died from coronavirus so far, so far. Who knows how many more are gonna die in the in the near future thanks to these variants and these mutations that continue to come about because people refuse to wear their masks, people refuse to do what they're supposed to do because again, they've absorbed the garbage coming from people like Laura Ingram. So look at this chart, it's from the CDC and it breaks down the number of coronavirus deaths by age and also by gender. So for males between the ages of zero to four years old, 76 of them have died. Males between the ages of five and 18, 157 died. For females zero to four, 55 deaths. For females five to 18, 135 deaths. That's a total of 423 deaths. It appears, it appears, I could be wrong, Charles, but it appears here that coronavirus is a little different from the typical flu that we experience every year. It appears that it's more contagious and more deadly. I don't know, I could be wrong though. I mean, I'm not a mathematician. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Maybe maybe the producers over at Fox know better than I do. Yeah, you know, there is um, a little thing called logical fallacy that people tend not to understand or employ when considering the garbage that is spewed over there oftentimes. Because one of the most popular logical fallacies that people employ these days is called false equivalency. And that's Mm -hmm. what we've just seen. We've seen her make a false equivalency or attempt to make a false equivalency in in comparing the flu virus to the coronavirus, which all viruses are not created equal and they are not the same and do not have the same capability and devastation. And so just the idea that you would sort of put them on the same playing field is absurd to begin with. But I do wanna go back in a larger way and talk about something from the second clip because it struck me as I watched it again. First and foremost, let me say this, I understand that there are a number of people who have serious reservations about whether they want to take the vaccine. I respect the fact that it's an individual choice and that people are hesitant. However, you can't just be out here without a solution around what it is that you were doing to prevent the spread of this virus and the pandemic. So if you're not going to wear a vaccine, I feel like you have to at least invest in some other method of protection, whether it's agreeing to social distance or agreeing to wear a mask or doing something that is going to help stave off what it is that you're not willing to do with respect to the vaccine. Are you willing to stay home? Are you, you know, and, and part of the problem that I see from that side is that the discourse is absent with what the actual solution that they believe is acceptable to number one, keep people safe while also respecting their actual social liber- civil liberties as they are putting it. But as it relates to that second quick clip, Anna, mm-hmm. the big thing that I wanted to say is, you know, you pointed out rather astutely that that crowd was becoming violent and that that crowd was becoming angry and that that crowd was actually making threats against public health officials. Mm-hmm. They did so in the presence of law enforcement mm-hmm. and law enforcement did nothing about it. That's right. When you talk about what it is to have an insurrection and how that is egged on, Fox News has already been sued for how harmful on a number of different occasions for how harmful their rhetoric is and how dangerous it is. And in a case like this, when she says kudos to the parents, her her actual words were who decided to fight back. And then you see that resulting, there's no, there's not, it's not a huge stretch to draw a line between that 
and riots and violence and all sorts of other things. And then you don't get to stand up and wash your hands of it and say, I have no idea how this happened. Right. This is not what I was advocating for. You absolutely were. You absolutely were applauding this. You absolutely were okay with this. You absolutely were egging it on. You were fertilizing the ground that these seeds were planted in so that when something like January 6th happens, you do not get to stand up and say, I have no 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 responsibility here. Right. You absolutely have blood on your hands almost almost in the literal sense when acts of violence do occur, when people are threatened. And so I think that as I watched that video, I was kind of thinking to myself, we haven't learned anything from the things that we've seen over the past year. No. We haven't learned any lessons and we refuse to change our ways. And I I just keep wondering to myself, what's it gonna take? What's it going to happen? First we thought you know, it was terrible with Charlottesville years and years and years ago, right? Like, oh, this is getting out of hand. And then we saw incident after incident of civil unrest over and over again. And, you know, oh, this is getting out of hand. This is getting out of hand. And then we come to January 6th. Like, and now we're still doing the same thing and allowing the same thing to take place because to me, that's very little, not at all different. There's very little difference between the rhetoric that she put out in response to that meeting and Donald Trump saying, you know, we got to fight like hell mm -hmm. to preserve our democracy. There's very, very little difference in, in those remarks and in that rhetoric. And it's equally as dangerous and nefarious. And so my question is, what's it going to take? Before we say like enough is enough and this has to stop. That's part of the problem, I don't know. And you know, with all the news that we cover on a daily basis, for the longest time I felt like, no, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, there are solutions. This is one of the issues where I don't see a solution. I don't see an end in sight. And the second that I finally felt a little bit of relief as people were getting vaccinated, that moment of, lightness of, you know, seeing that light at the end of the tunnel, that was just completely destroyed. And I'm I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of it. Because the very people who are whining and crying about having to wear masks seem to fail to realize that if they just they just work together, if we just could do something in a collectivist way in this country, we could combat this. We could be done with it. But unfortunately, we've got all sorts of uh, propagandists working against that. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.